Praise the Lord. Laura, we do have a good word today, yeah. and uh, we've, been, we've been super stirred about this. Uh, this is one of those messages that, uh, you know, that you and I have attempted to walk out our entire life, and I, we were talking yesterday and just sharing about, uh, Laura, when I, I was saved when I was 19 years old. And I remember. I was uh, you there. You remember. La hey, let me there. tell you, my wife, before, we didn't like each other when we were teenagers. Uh, we were talking the other day. I dated one of her good friends, best friends. And um, I used to think Laura was just jealous. She didn't. No, she was, she, I had no interest. She's like, well, I'm going to get my, she's like thinking in the back of her mind, I'm going to get my turn and it's going to be glorious. No but interest. <laughs> anyway, um, I was saved and I really believe that Laura, she's told me many times that she prayed for me. About six months or so before, I just had such a burden. I mean, it was just like, it came on me to just begin praying for, I didn't know at the time, my future husband. And I'm talking praying, speaking the word, interceding. And uh, so it was a special night that I actually got to be there the night that I saw my future husband give his heart, like radically give his heart to Christ. Did you love me back then? I, I mean, I loved. You loved me with the love of the Lord. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you loved me. I loved I you with God the love of the Lord. I knew God had a plan for your life. Lord. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, babe. Anyway, uh, so I got, I gave my heart to the Lord, and it was, uh, you know, I, it was very powerful. Um, I was touched. Uh, you know, I had been in and out of religion my whole life, and I never had an encounter with Jesus. So that night in High Springs, Florida, um, I had an encounter with the yeah. power of, of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't weird. It wasn't flaky. It was just God. You know, all these people I've heard give testimonies. They said, man, it was like liquid love just poured over me. And I'm like, I never experienced that. Yeah. That was a whole new deal for me. Maybe you experienced that, you know, growing up here at Melody. I had never had that. And so I, I came to the Lord. I started immediately just serving and uh, played drums in the youth band. And I, I was on fire. Uh, I was on fire for Jesus, man. I tell everybody I knew about Jesus. I was a plumber at the time. We'd do service work, drive all around, all around, five counties probably covering all kind of. So I was always in somebody's house. Uh, and, man, I'd pray for people. I'd, I'd lay hands on them if they were open for prayer, you know. I didn't just go lay hands on them, you know. But I asked them, you know, hey, can I pray for you? I ministered to them, ministered to coworkers. I uh, remember I uh, told my brother one time, who was my boss, he owned the company, and uh, he said, I need you to work such and such a night. I said, I can't. I have to go to church. And uh, he said, well, I need you. I said, well, I don't work for you. I work for God. And then my brother said, well, good. Tell him to sign your paycheck on Friday. So anyway, <laughs> but, it, you know, anyway, we move forward. But the point is, I was on fire. Then, Laura, the Lord led me to Bible school. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't necessarily, I never thought about Bible school, never thought about ministry, never felt called to the ministry. I just felt called to Jesus. Yeah. And all of a sudden I had this stirring and stirring. And then all of a sudden I ended up uh, going to Bible college, a school I'd never heard of, yeah. um, you know, uh, went and checked it out and just loaded up and went. And Laura, something happened to me during that time. Um, and that's what I want to kind of focus in on today. Something changed in me. And I came back, and there was more of a seriousness about my life. Um, and I feel like what we're wanting to share on this morning is being committed, uh, finding and fulfilling the plan of God, but being committed to that plan. Yeah. And, you know, pastor, and we, yeah. we come across all types of kinds of people, and, you know, uh, we'll get into this another time. But, you know, it's sad to see, Laura, people get in just for a little while, and the Bible talks about it. Yeah. It says that they're going to come in and they have no roots and they're going to just. It breaks your heart. It breaks your heart because you care. You care for people and you want to see them fulfill God's plan. So, Laura, I came back from Bible college and I was different. Uh, I was changed. And I, uh, I think there's some keys that I've learned since that time of what's kept you and I committed to the plan of God. So we want to share on uh, some of those principles, and then we're going to get into maybe, you know, some of the things as far as what it's going to take to count the cost. So everybody say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Amen. So the first thing that we, we had down was, which I already alluded to, was how to find and fulfill the will of God. The first thing we had was you have to experience him. Yeah. Amen. 
I was thinking this morning about that. Like, there's a difference between knowing something and experiencing something. That, that's powerful. You can have head knowledge. You can know all about it. But unless you experience it, yeah. um, just knowing about something is not going to change you. I remember reading um, when I taught English, we would read To Kill a Mockingbird. And um, in that book, there was a quote Atticus Fitch would say, um, talking about a man that he was um, that he was um, defending um, on trial, Tom Robinson. And he said something like, you'd never you don't know like what someone's going through uh, or, or how their life is being lived unless you've like walked in their shoes. And, and it's really true in the sense too, that you don't, unless you experience it, unless you walk it out for yourself, it just remains in your head. Yeah. And that's powerful. And I think that that's what I felt, Laura is I couldn't understand when I'd be a part of like you know, different churches or services and other believers. And I'd look and say, why are these people so like boring? Like, why are they bored? Are they bored yeah. with God? Or, and I didn't realize until like many years into being saved that really what happens to a lot of believers is, and we'll get into this in a later point, but salvation becomes the only thing mm -hmm. that they experience. Like they yeah. come down, they say a prayer, they shake the pastor's hand, they say, glory to God, I'm in, I'm, my name's in heaven's roll book. And that's the only thing that they ever, is anybody, can I get a witness? Anybody come out of a, you know, an upbringing like that? The goal was to be saved. And don't get me wrong, obviously. Praise God. Praise God. That's what we believe, right? We yes. believe that Jesus died to save us. So salvation obviously is the main thing, but it's not the only thing. That's good. That's good. And, you know, so that's, it's so, super powerful. But Laura, I had an encounter with God. I love this scripture here, James 4, 8, just the beginning part of it, because the second part's a little scary, but the first part, it says, draw near to God, yeah. and he will draw near to you. So good. I love this, Hebrews eleven five 5, 2. This is one of my favorite people in the Bible. Um, it talks about Enoch, Hebrews eleven five. 5. It, said, it was by faith. Everybody say, by faith. By faith. It was by faith that Enoch. Everybody say, Enoch. Enoch. I love that. I love Enoch. He was taken up to heaven without dying. Awesome. He, Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. Listen to this. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. So now. Good. Uh, the reason I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me this scripture, Laura, is to say this. There is no limits to the level of our intimacy with God. That's good. Enoch walked so close yeah. with, closely That's with God, good. pleased God so much mm. that literally the Lord came and whoo, caught him up. He, he is one of, I believe, one or two people that was caught up. Yeah. Eli Elijah yeah. and Enoch, both of them were caught up, never tasted physical death. Mm. So there are no limits on the, the level that we can attain to as far as our experience yeah. of and with God. Good. Amen. Somebody say, I want more of him. Mm, I want more. Glory of him. to God. There's Amen. no limit. The apostle Paul uh, said this, Laura. He said he was caught up into the third heaven. Yeah. And he said he saw things that it blew his mind, basically, yeah. literally. And he said, man, there's some things I've seen I can't even put into human yeah. words. Mm. What is that? That's an experience with God. Look at the Apostle John, Laura. He said uh, in the beginning of the book of Revelation, he said, I was in the Spirit. Yeah. Everybody say, in the Spirit. In the Spirit. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And he said, I saw all these things. He said, the Lord Jesus appeared to him. He saw Jesus. Uh, amen. He saw angels. He saw, you know, all these heavenly realities. You look at the book of, uh, I believe it's, uh, is it Isaiah where he saw, was caught up again into heaven. Mm. And he saw, you know, the angels and the winged creatures. Mm. And it's the one where he said, here my Lord, send me. They sent a coal, an angel grabbed a coal from the fire of God, touched his, his uh, mouth and cleansed him. And he was going to speak forth the word of the Lord. What are all these things? These are encounters yeah. and experiences with the Lord. Good. Amen. We're not just talking about salvation, Laura. Yeah. What Oh, man, this is good. good. What is going to cause you and I, what is going to cause you, amen, to actually be committed to the, the plan that God has for you? Yeah. The first thing is it's going to be 
an experience with God. Yeah. You're going to have to encounter yes. him. And not yes. just every day. Last one. Look at those uh, apostles on the, in the upper room in Acts chapter 2. Yeah. Uh, some people say that's just a Pentecostal belief. Folks, well, that's a Bible well, church it's belief. Well, powerful because before, I mean, in Jesus' crucifixion, they're like all running scared. They're cowards. Or they're denying Christ. I don't even know him. But then after they had an experience in that upper room, they're boldly going out and they're preaching the gospel. And many are coming to him. I mean, they gave their lives. They laid down their lives for the gospel message when at the time of Jesus' crucifixion. And they had walked with him for three, three and a half years. And here they, they're, they're denying that, that they even know the man. What changed? They had an encounter. They had an experience. They had an encounter. And that's why every one of those early um, apostles, disciples, the majority of them were martyred. Yeah. There wasn't a price that was too high that they were willing to pay. Why? Because all of them had an experience yeah. with God. Isn't that so powerful? Good. Yeah. I love the uh, apostle Peter. He said, I believe history says that he, they were going to crucify him. And he said, don't crucify me. Yeah right side up because that's the way Jesus died and I'm not worthy to die like yeah. that. Isn't that powerful, yeah, man? Yeah. That touches me. So they crucified him upside down. Yeah. What would cause someone to do that? They had an experience with God. We can't that's undervalue good. this point. It's good. So if you're watching this morning and you say, I haven't had an encounter with God. Well, you know, up till the time I was almost 20 years old, I hadn't either. But when I had an encounter with the Lord, Laura, yeah. everything changed yeah. and when you get a taste of him you're not interested in much of anything else isn't that's that good. powerful yeah it's good you got something well i was just going to encourage you too i was also thinking on this point this morning and i thought i mean you can you can encounter christ anywhere you can have an encounter anywhere but most of the encounters that i've had with jesus they've been in a corporate setting where the anointing and the glory is at and I just, like, this is an encouragement, like, those who, who have children, those who have teenagers, put your children and your teenagers, because I'll tell you, if we don't get them as a teenager and a child, it's very difficult for them to come back or to come to Christ. But if you put them in a position when they're young, where they're in a place where they can encounter and experience Jesus, it's those moments that will remain. And and even, even if, even if they stray and kind of do their own thing, that encounter, I'll tell you, it will bring them back to that place that they were at. So that's just an encouragement for parents and grandparents there. You put Put your children in a place, not in a dead place, not in a religious place, but in a place where they can encounter God Almighty. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about that pastor in uh, the last number of years. We could tell a drastic difference yes. between the kids, yes. the kids that were plugged in church yes. versus the it kids shows. that their parents didn't necessarily have them yeah. in church or, you know, whatever the case might be. It's interesting it is, because it, the ones I, th I see that we're in, yeah. there's something that trend. Now, it's not 100% across the board, no, but there's, but there's, there's something that's happened in those young people that yeah. it causes them to stay yeah. somehow and get back on course. Those seeds have been the seeds. Sown. It's seeds, it's, it's connection, it's fellowship, community, yeah. all those different things, encounters with the Holy Spirit, yeah. et cetera. Anyway. Um, so, Laura, to be to find and fulfill the will of God, we've got to have experiences with God. Yeah. We were created to have fellowship with God. Do you realize that? We were never created to, to come and sit in a pew and hear a sermon. That's fine, but that's not the main reason that you and I were created. We were created to have fellowship yes. with God. Yes. You can see that in the book of Genesis where God would come down and fellowship with Adam and Eve yes. in the garden. It's a spiritual being fellowshipping with a spirit being. Amen? Yeah. With a spiritual being. So you can't overlook this. So the, the first thing is experience God. The second thing is, Laura, is knowledge. Yeah. What I realized when I came back from Bible school, and it's not necessarily, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I had some new information. Yeah. Uh, I love this scripture here, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. It says, for my thoughts, so, so many of us know this verse, right? Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts, everybody say his thoughts. His thoughts. His thoughts are not my thoughts. Yeah. If, if it do every person in the world good, every Christian good, if they would just say yeah. that, amen? Yeah. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Then Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed, yeah. right, to, the, to, the, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. Yeah. That's a whole process of yeah. getting the thoughts that you currently have, the mindsets yeah. that you currently have, allowing God's word to change and, and get rid of that old stuff and get the new stuff in. Yeah. Amen. Come on. How many of us in this room at one point, some some may still, you thought that healing was a blessing. For, I mean, sickness was a blessing from God. Yeah. I grew up thinking I didn't know. Yeah. I thought maybe God put sickness on people to teach them stuff. Yeah. Teach them how to be humble. Yeah. That was a, a mindset that I had. But when I started looking yes. in the scriptures, yes. I started seeing, wait yes. a minute, yes. Jesus, the Bible said, by his stripes, I was healed. Yes. Then it, it teaches in the whole New Testament that we are redeemed from so sickness. Good. So I hadn't heard yeah. that information before. Yeah. Amen. Another powerful one, Laura, was I was raised in a, in a very religious environment. And I, I oh, no matter Listen, I was raised in church. My mom would tell you, she'll, she'll stand up here and tell you, three days old in the church nursery. Yeah. And I was in church my whole life. But just because we're in a church yeah. doesn't mean that we're getting a hold of God. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's probably hundreds of thousands yeah. of churches all over the world. Yeah. There's, there's dead as the, 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 the yeah. tilapia I bought the other day in the freezer section at Publix. <laughs> I mean, they're dead. They, they, they got a form of godliness, but they have yeah. no power. And I'm yeah. not trying to say that to be hurtful. Yeah. But I, I lived under a law mentality, Laura. Yeah. I had no concept of grace. I felt like God was all the while ready to get me. Anybody, can I get a witness in yeah. here? I felt like God was after me. God was going to yeah. strike me down. Man, yep. don't ever say the Lord's name in vain. Yeah. You know, when I was a teenager, I rarely used the Lord's name in vain. You know, like we say, a cuss word, you're taking God's name and making a cuss word out of it. I didn't say that one because I thought for sure God would yeah. strike me dead. Yeah. Anybody? I'd hear somebody say that. And say, you know, friends, they didn't have the, the church law mentality. They'd say God's name in vain like over and over and over again. And I thought, Lord, why are they not dead? You know, I thought for <laughs> sure God would strike them dead. But what I came to realize through New Testament teaching was we're under a dispensation of grace. Yeah. Yeah. God's not judging me according yeah. to my sin. The truth will make you free. So good, Laura. <laughs> but what changed, what causes us to be committed to the will of God mm. is knowledge. Yeah. Not knowledge that puffs up, but what the Bible calls, Laura, the Greek word epi-knowledge, epinosis, which is super knowledge. Yeah, Literally means good. super knowledge. And if you study it, it means revelation knowledge. Mm. So knowledge from God that is revealed to your spirit empowers you. The Apostle Paul said this. I'm preaching pretty good this, this morning. I'm sorry. I don't no, mean for you to sit go, up here while go. I'm pre Hey, pre hey get go. your towel, girl. Get your I got my preach. Towel. <laughs> preach. <laughs> uh, the Apostle Paul describes this in, uh, I believe, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, if I'm not mistaken. He, he says that he was praying to the Lord. He said, Lord, apparently the Apostle Paul Lord, said that there was a messenger of Satan that was assigned to him. Yes. Right, yes. and he said, King James said there was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me. Yeah. A lot of uh, 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 people in the body of Christ thought it said to buffet me, yeah. so that everybody went to the buffet. Right? So no, that's not what Paul was saying. Buffet means it means strike after strike after strike. And Paul said, I've got this demonic power yeah. that keeps coming and pounding and pounding and pounding on me. Anybody ever experienced this? Mm -hmm. I have, yeah. and it's not fun at all. And the Apostle Paul, Laura, he went to the Lord in prayer three times about it, he said. Three times. King James says thrice. Everybody say thrice. thrice. Just because it's a cool word. <laughs> he said three times I went to the Lord about this in prayer. And every time the Lord spoke to me and said, my grace so is good. enough for you. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. powerful? Yeah. But the cool thing about this story was, that, Laura, the Apostle Paul said, this messenger of Satan was sent to me lest I be exalted above what was average and ordinary because of the revelations I received mm. from the Lord. Mm. Now, let me say that again. This messenger of Satan, not of God, yeah. was sent to pound on Paul, yeah. lest he go beyond what is average and ordinary according to the world. 
They're meaning this. He said, because of the revelations that I received. So Paul was saying the revelations that we receive from God will cause us to be thrown beyond what is average or ordinary in the world standards. Are you listening to me? Good. The, 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 the revelations that we receive so from good. Jesus, Laura, will propel us beyond. We, as believers, should be super people on the earth. Yeah. The revelation yeah. knowledge of God's word, Laura, should make us different. I love this. Brother Hagan said this. He said that, uh, he, he, I'm not going to get into the story, but um, he was a pastor and a member of his church, fell into a piece of oil machinery yeah. back in the oil fields in Texas. And he said the guy was in a coma. And uh, Brother Hagin said he was his pastor. He went to the hospital. He said the Lord basically gave him a word about it. And he said, this guy's going to live. Well, it's actually the reverse. Brother Hagin commanded the guy to live. Yeah. And then the guy ended up living because of he exercised his authority. But he said this. He said he talked to the wife. And he said this. He said the doctors say he's not going to make it the next hour or two. This man in, the, in his hospital bed. He's not going to make it another hour or two. And he'll be lucky if he makes it through the night. But Brother Hagen looked at this wife and he said this. This is what the doctor said. And then the wife said to Brother Hagen, she said, aren't you glad we have inside information? So good. She said, somebody said, what does inside information so mean? She said, that means we have information oh inside the word of God that we supersedes. know to be more true than that report. Ooh. Isn't that powerful? It supersedes any report you receive. It supersedes. So knowledge, everybody say knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge will cause us to operate at a higher level. I wrote this in my notes last night, Laura. I'm not living in a world system that Jesus died to deliver me from. Yes. 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 So, yes. oh, you want to hear that again? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not living in a world system that Jesus died to deliver me from. So good. So when I graduated from Bible college, I got home and I realized, now I've since have gr grown a little bit slack in some of these things, but the world's wearing me down a little bit too much, I admit it. But I'd come home, and Laura, and I just, I didn't have time for secular television. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time for movies. This is before Netflix. Now that's just, forget about it. It's too easy, right? I didn't have time. I wasn't interested. Yeah. Because there was something in me, that revelation that I had just received through being trained in the word of God. Mm. That stuff wasn't, it wasn't, it was like I died to it. Yeah. So what, what caused me to come up out of, Laura and I were talking yesterday, and she was saying that so many people say, well, my calling is to, you know, uh, I, this is a delicate subject, and it's, I don't want to be misunderstood, but somebody said, you know, my job is just to be, uh, to take care of my family. How many believe taking care of your family is a good thing? Very, very good thing. I, we would never disagree with that, and we would never say that the Word of God disagrees with that. But how many know taking care of your family at the expense of not doing the will of God is not God? Yeah. Somebody said, here's another secular humanistic viewpoint. Oh, I want to make memories with my children. Yeah. Nothing wrong with making memories. Yeah. Guess what? You're going to have eternity to spend with your children. Yeah, so good. Our little 80 to 120 year life, if we're blessed with that much life here, is going to pale in comparison to eternity. Yeah. So my, my objective is not to make memories with my children. Mm, That's a so secular good. humanistic viewpoint. Yeah. But when the word of God, Laura, comes into our heart and we realize it causes us to live at a higher level yeah. of, of, of thinking. Yeah. So I'm not living, I, I'm grateful for the days that I have, that yeah. happiness is abounding. Yeah. But I'm not going to be moved if I have an unhappy day. Mm -hmm. Hello? Anybody listening? Yeah. Am I preaching to myself today? It's good. It's, it's kind of one of them things, Laura. My goal is not, again, to live for my own happiness. Yeah. That is a very shallow existence. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Is anybody listening? we got to live for something higher, and the way that we live for something higher, Laura, is by living, getting some new information. Amen. Amen. Uh, the third thing we have, and we'll probably only have time for this one, is number three is, so in order to find and fulfill and be committed to the will of God, Laura, we've got to have experiences with God. Yeah. We've got to get some more information. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. We've got to have more information. 
That's where the knowledge of God's word comes in. That's why it's so important to be in church, right? Yeah. We've got to be in church. We've got to be receiving. Yeah. Our kids yeah. need to be in church, yes. hearing the yes. word of God on a regular basis. I, I think it's amazing um, just the word that I have in me that um, was instilled in me at such a young age. I mean, scriptures will just come out of my heart, and I'm like, how did I know that scripture? Oh, <laughs> I got it way back here. You know, we, uh, in the Christian school growing up, we had to uh, memorize, like, passages of scriptures every month. I mean, like, a long, huge passage um, in, our, in our paces that we would have, in our books. You know, it was, it was scriptures um, that we would constantly memorize. The other day, Darren Christian was working on something, and, oh, he was listening to the Bible because um, he had to read the entire chapter of Mark, and he had to do a summary on each chapter for his Bible class, and um, he got to a couple passages of Scripture, and he starts quoting them as the person is reading them, and, and he wasn't looking at his phone. He was just quoting them, and I said, how did you know that? He says, oh, yeah, we learned all those passages in Bible class, and it just it blessed me tremendously knowing, like, my son is getting the Word of God in him too and at such a young age you'll have something to pull from to draw from yeah and one of the great disservices we do to our children is that they don't have they grow up with a, with a worldly mindset they grow up they're not thinking in line with god's word yeah. and god's it, timeline, yeah. you know, we're, we're, at the, we're in the last of the last days. And I love what you said the other day, because I do believe we are in the last of the last days, but Darren said the other day, he said, even if we are not in the last of the last days, we're in our last of the last days. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a hold of that? Even if we're not in the last days, you are in your last days. Yeah. <laughs> you only got so many days on the earth. 80 to 120 years yeah. in the span of eternity is a very a small portion of time. Amen. Um, so the third thing, Laura, we had um, on top of knowledge was mission and purpose. Yeah. And maybe I'll just skim through these so we can kind of get to the other part of the message. But um, mission and purpose is something that we cannot overlook. Uh, it's something that every human being yeah. longs for. Everybody yeah. say mission. Mission. Mission and purpose. Uh, you know, one of the great things that uh, happened to me when I was saved is immediately God gave me a plan for my life. Yeah. Not the full plan, but a step of the plan. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited just to wake up every day knowing that God had a plan and a purpose for my life. Yeah. But here's the cool thing about God, Laura. His plans and purposes are eternal. Yeah. Our plans, everybody point to yourself, say, my plans. My plans. Our plans are temporary and worldly. Mm. Unless our minds are renewed and unless we're walking with the Lord, yeah. our plans are temporary and worldly. But when we start learning to follow God, Laura, we start fulfilling his plans. Yeah. His plans will always have an impact on eternity. So, therefore, yeah. God's plans are eternal plans. Yeah. And that's what's going to last. That's the only thing that's going to last. We had that uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. No. But Laura and I were talking the other day about, uh, oh, where is that scripture? I think it's, uh, yeah. You could skim, skim down to the next, 1 Corinthians 3. It says this, that anyone who builds on the foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw, but on the judgment day, everybody say the judgment day. Judgment on day. the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. Let's talk yeah. about you and I. Amen? So it says, the, uh, if the work survives, the builder will receive a reward, but if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be, will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Mm. Now, that's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> scary. This is you and I standing before Jesus, and Jesus is going to bring every single work that you and I did while we lived in these bodies. Every single work that we did, he's gonna, it's going to go before, we're going to all... Like they say, that videotape's going to roll. They probably got crazy technology up in heaven. But the plan, our, life wor our life's work will roll before us. And then, I'm assuming, I don't know how all this is going to transpire. It'll probably be pretty awesome to watch. The, f the fire of God is literally going to come and mm. consume everything that we did. And the things that were not done with eternal purposes are literally going to be burned up right in front of us. But see these things that were built with gold, silver, and jewels? Yeah. The fire will not consume them. Yeah. 
Those things were eternal works that you and I put our hand to while we were here on the earth. Good. Are you listening? Yeah. It, this is powerful, Laura. Yeah. So God's plan, so somebody might be watching and saying, man, you got my attention talking about all my stuff's going to be burned up. How do I find and fulfill the will of God? You seek after it. Yeah. What scares me is when someone says, I'm doing everything I want to do. Yeah. That tells me that they're either immature or not saved. Yeah. Because the, the longer I walk with the Lord, the more I'm doing for him, I realize that those are not the things I want to do. Yeah. Those are the things that he wants me to do. Yeah. And when I take his will and do it in place of my will, I'm building on a foundation with gold, silver, and precious jewels. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Meaning I'm building eternal plans with my life. Yeah. I heard a minister that we both had tremendous admiration for years ago. Um, he said this. He said, these days I am only focused on eternity. Mm. Is that not powerful? powerful? What you and I do with this life will powerful. affect our eternity. So God's plans, Laura, are yeah. eternal. Yeah. And in connection with that, the things that we do for God will be rewarded. Yeah. Is everybody here? Y'all done gone home. Yeah, it's good. Hello? I know you ain't going to the Dixie Grill, so y'all better just hang tight. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. The things that we do for the Lord will be rewarded. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Everybody that gets into heaven will not live on the same plane. Yeah. I'm working. I have decided to live for eternity and for eternal rewards. Yeah, yeah. yeah but Pastor Darren, doesn't everybody that gets in get rewarded? No. Yeah. No. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, without faith it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. Amen. Is anybody listening? Yeah. So if we're not diligently seeking him, there's not going to be a lot of rewards. But somebody said, oh, but isn't being saved good enough? Yes, saved is good enough to get you in. But I don't know how it's all going to transpire. I don't know if you have all of eternity to start building up some rewards. And I don't know how all this looks, Laura, but I know the scripture is plain. Yeah. And it says that we are, will be rewarded for the things that we do for him. Yeah. Amen. That's good. So if my mansion is bigger than yours, don't get upset. <laughs> Just kidding. Praise the Lord. Heavenly rewards are in store for those who diligently seek the Lord. Yeah. So we're doing eternal things. Yeah. I'm, I'm, let me do a little re recap here. We, we, to find and fulfill the will of God, we've got to number one, what, Laura? Experience God. Experience God. Experience God. Number two, we've got to get the knowledge. right knowledge. Yes. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. Number three, we've got to realize that God's plans are eternal plans. Yes. They're not natural human plans. Well, and to know that God does have a plan and a purpose for you, I mean, there's, there is something specific that he has created you to do. We are all part of the body, yeah. and each part of the body has a part to play. I, uh, we, yeah, that's exactly right, Lord. This ain't just a minister's job. We're no. all ministers. No, and you We're may all have, part of the body. No, and you may have a job, a secular job, but that's not, per se, your call. You can have a secular job, and you can still have a call of God on your life, That's something so that he's called you to do. And I'll tell you when, you, when you begin to step into that place and into that call where maybe your secular job has not brought the fulfillment, you know, or the satisfaction, you'll get it from your call. You may not get it from your job, but you'll get it from your call. But we're all called. That's so powerful, Lauren. I just saw that when you were saying that. Just because you have a so-called secular job, one of our uh, friends who's a pastor in Georgia, he said that 98% of the body of Christ is out in the secular yes. world. Think about this for a minute. 98% of the body of Christ is in the secular world. There's only 2% that are in what we would call full-time ministry. Are you listening? So does that mean the body of Christ is made up of only 2% of people that are saved? No, you nailed it, Laura. Those 98% of the rest of the people outside of the fivefold ministry, they're as much a part of the body of Christ as you and I are. Well, and I'll tell you what we're all called to do is we're all called to walk into the fullness 
of the gospel message. And the revelation. And when yeah. you're walking in the fullness, when you're walking in that revelation, everywhere you go, everybody you come in contact with, those in your secular job in your arena, they're going to see there's something different. They're going to see that even when you're going through a difficult time, you know, where hell has landed at your doorstep, that you're still pressing on, you're moving forward, that God is faithful, that you're not, you know, crying and weeping and, and under, but there's like this peace that just transcends everything else, that there's this, this, uh, this joy um, that you can't, it's an unexplainable joy. They'll see those things. They'll see you blessed. They'll see you favored. They're going to want what you have. And see, that's what we should all be doing. That's, that's a call. <laughs> that's a call right there. It's powerful. You think uh, everybody, uh, one of our mentors taught us, everybody in the body of Christ, the little pinky toe in the body of Christ the has the same there. amount yeah. of authority as that's it. the most powerful man or woman yeah. of God. The pinky toe in the body of Christ has the same level of authority. Yeah. The same level, the same yeah. authority. Yeah. They're in Christ as much as the most powerful yep. man or woman of God. Yep. They're, in, they're united to, as much united to Christ as anybody yep. that's powerful in the anointing. Amen. We're all in the body. Yep. And you, you, you spoke it awesomely, Laura, that we all should be manifesting yeah. the fullness of God. That's actually the way yeah. this thing's supposed to work. Yeah. And that's why uh, encounters are important. That's why knowledge is important. The that's, whole nine. Yeah. Let's get down to the next section. <laughs> I was just admiring your beauty okay. for a minute. <laughs> I want to get down quickly okay, to the next heavenly section rewards, before we go. Uh, number five, uh, know that God's will and God's word is coming to pass whether you want it to or not. Yeah. 300 prophecies about Christ coming into the earth and fulfilling what he did. 300 prophecies were all fulfilled when Jesus was born and lived his life and uh, went through the crucifixion, yeah. et cetera. 300 prophecies. Somebody said it'd be it, almost impossible to find for eight of those prophecies to come to pass. But 300 to came pass. to pass. And here's the point. Yeah. Everything that God has spoken will come to pass. Yes. The majority, if not almost all of end time Bible prophecy has come to pass, yeah. which means we're in the last yeah. of the last minutes of the yeah. last days. Yep. It's powerful. So everything God said, how do we, why would we be committed to the will of God? Because what God said is coming to pass. And quickly, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it will happen in a moment. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever, and we who are living will also be transformed. Mm -hmm. This word is right so close to coming to pass right here. But guess what? It's coming to pass. And those who are not saved will unfortunately go to hell. Those who are saved and didn't do the work of God will get into heaven, but will not have a great uh, reward system laid up for them. Laura, it's only those that were born again in Christ and actually fulfilled the plans that God had for their life yeah. that are going to be in and rejoicing and actually given charge of much more in eternity. So what would cause me to find and fulfill the will of God? God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. Laura, I know you want to talk a little bit about uh, being committed. Um, we're we're going to start wrapping things up here in the next few Counting minutes. Counting the calls is yeah. kind of the next section. And I want to read um, uh, a passage here in Luke chapter 14, verse 28 through the 30. It's in the Passion Translation. It's powerful. It says, so don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. Don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. For who would construct a house before first sitting down to estimate uh, to estimate the cost to complete it? Otherwise, he may lay the foundation and not be able to finish. The neighbors will ridicule him, saying, look at him, he started to build but couldn't complete it. There is a cost to be counted. Um, I think, and we've talked about this before, that sometimes ministers will get up and they make it sound like if you just give your heart to Christ, everything is just going to be roses and amazing. And you're just going to, you know, dance all over the place, you know, after you've given your heart to Christ. But the, the fact of the matter is, is there is a cost uh, to be counted because you are essentially dying to self. 
I mean, that's what happens. You're not only making him your savior, but when you make him your Lord, you're saying it's no longer my will, but it's your will be done. I'm crucifying my flesh and now I'm living for you. It's you, it's Jesus living in and through me. That's, where was that verse at? That was so powerful. Um, oh, one of these scriptures down here in Galatians somewhere, but it says, basically it says, it's Jesus living through my body. That's what we should look like as a Christian, but I wanted to read this quote here. Um, I didn't want to lose it. It's, it's A.W. Tozer, and he said this. He said, in every Christian's heart, there is a cross and a throne, and the Christian is on the throne till he puts himself on the cross. If he refuses the cross, he remains on the throne. We want to be saved, but we insist that Christ do all the dying. No cross for us, no dethronement, no dying. We remain king within the little kingdom of man's soul and wear a tinsel crown with all the pride of a Caesar. A Caesar. But we doom ourselves to shadows and weakness and spiritually void of power. We have a cross and we have a throne on the inside of us. It's powerful. Come on up, Travis. This is uh, interesting, Laura, and I'd like to continue on in, um, in some of these thoughts as far as consecration and commitment. And I just feel like right now that the Lord's dealing with some folks that maybe uh, are watching and maybe some that are here on just that God has a plan. And we're right at the edge of eternity, Laura. Yes. Remember we preached the other uh, couple weeks ago about the veil the veil is what's hidden on the other side of the beyond the veil, yeah. But really, the veil of time, we're right at the edge of the veil of time being over where we're going to, I the Lord showed it to me really in my spirit by revelation. It said, just one step. It's, it's going to be literally like we're here doing the will of God and we're going to take one step. We're literally one step from stepping over into eternity. And my God, I, I, I know, you know, so many people watch these services, Laura, but I'm convicted in my heart that I, I know I just sense that there's a, a heaviness and I almost feel it like it's, it's, it's just, it's like a burden, you know, because what people don't realize is there's an enemy and he fights so hard to keep people blinded and ignorant to the plans of God. And it's, it's almost not fair. You know, Laura, I was giving a little bit of my testimony, and I just, I was almost 20 years old. I was, I had no purpose, no vision, no, no spirit of God in me. I was lost. I had no purpose and all those things, no love. And then it's like Jesus just came, and Jesus just, I found him, like I said in here, I found him to be such a loving Savior. And such a confidant, a friend, just a, a strengthener, a helper in time of need, a, a, a wise counselor. And I, I used to say to myself, why wouldn't everybody want to walk with the Lord? Because you look out and you see everybody, it looks like they're having so much fun. You know, in the world, it looks like they're, they're just, you know, I watch these different ones. They, they just live these wild, crazy lives. And you look, you think, here I am over here paying the price to do the will of God. But, Laura, there's coming a day. Uh, I want to tell this story. Somebody said, uh, I heard this minister on the radio say that this gentleman, missionary, was coming home after 30 years of being on the mission field. And he said that he was on a ship, and there was a very famous actor or athlete or something. And he said they came back to the port, and this famous person began to get off the ship, and there was crowds of people cheering for him, you know, like celebrating him, like throwing confetti in the air and stuff down at his feet, and they were just celebrating him. And this guy probably wasn't even a godly man, didn't do anything for the kingdom of God. And this missionary of over 30 years looked at this whole display, and he said, he said to the Lord, or out of his own mouth, he said to the Lord, he said, how come there's nobody here to welcome me back? I've been serving you all these years doing your will, and no one's here to welcome me home. And he said, the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, 
you're not home yet. Isn't that powerful? There's coming a day where you and I, the people of God, are going to be rewarded. Is it tough sometimes? You know, I see my father-in-law back there, Pastor Frank. He served the Lord in this church for so many years. And I, I know, Lord tells me stories how he would come home and he just, the ministry would be all over him. The burden of it. And what kept him going all those years? It's like, I believe there's, and I believe Pastor Frank's children are really, really blessed and favored in so many regards because that's a reward for his faithfulness. Yes. Listen, somebody said one time, God God doesn't always pay on Friday, but God always has a payday. And I'm telling you, I serve the Lord, Laura, because he's good. I serve the Lord because I'm operating on a higher level of knowledge that's been imparted into my spirit. I follow the Lord because I've had too many encounters. Son, I burned the bridges years ago. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I've already had too much of him in my life to go back to a world system empowered and driven by the devil, lust, and greed. I'm not going back. Man, the knowledge, the, the, the mission and purpose of eternity, glory to God, the thought of heavenly rewards. Man, the thought of impacting eternity. Laura, why would I ever live a shallow life? Why would I ever choose? And if you're watching this morning and you're, 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 you're stirred right now by the Spirit of God, everybody close your eyes this morning. You're stirred this morning. We, we didn't get into all the message that we had. Uh, maybe we can just pick up next week or do a, a, something on uh, a, a video this week just to capture the cost of what, it, what it's going to take for you and I to fulfill. The days are short. I want to prophesy over you. The days are short. Glory to God. The days are short. Hallelujah. I feel the, the, the uh, unction of the Holy Spirit right now. Somebody needs to repent right now. That means, repent means change your mind, change your direction. You've made your life all about you, your happiness, your fulfillment. And let me tell you, that is one of the lowest, that is the epitome of a secular humanistic mindset. It's secular, it's worldly, it's not godly, it's not biblical. For you to live your life only based on your success and your happiness is the lowest level that a human being can live on. No, my, my father-in-law preached at one time. He said Jesus was the most unoriginal person on that's ever lived on the planet. He was the most unoriginal. He, he probably never acted on an original thought. He was only here with one purpose in mind, to find and fulfill the plan of his heavenly father. Even at 12 years old, he was in the temple learning and growing as a child. When he became of age, he was anointed with the spirit and he only did what he saw the father do. He only said what he heard the father say. His purpose on the earth was to fulfill the plan of God. That should be our plan. That should be our desire. Let the Lord, let the wind of the Holy Spirit right now come into wherever you are and let that wind bring you up to a higher level. Don't live for the, 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 oh, the temporary fleeting happiness that this world disconnect from the world system y your diet's got to change you got to start feeding yourself truth you got to start and i'm not talking about everybody's got their own truth i'm talking about the truth of the bible you've got to have a steady intake of faith from the word of god jesse duplantis who stood on this stage said i already used yesterday's faith i got from the word i need some more today you got to have a daily intake of the word of god Come on, somebody's on the verge right now of taking a step over and becoming more eternity-minded. Stop living for just this world. This world and its ways are going to pass away. Glory to God. You and I are going to be standing here on a new earth that's been reformed by the power of God. And Jesus will be ruling here on this earth. And I'm going to be ruling with him. That's the eternity that we're heading towards. That's the, the, the plan of God that you and I are heading towards. Yes, the rapture is going to happen. Yes, the, the years of tribulation are going to happen. Yes, the Antichrist is going to rise up. Yes, uh, everything that's in God's word will come to pass. So don't be caught 
un, unaware and un, un, not, uh, not prepared and not ready. The Bible speaks of f- uh, ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. The five foolish let their oil run out. The Bible speaks of two men working in a field. One will be caught away and the other will be left. All these stories and principles and truth, they're all coming to pass. We've got to live for eternity. So right now, everybody in this room, everybody watching, I want you to just take a moment. I'm I'm telling you, I want you to make a point of, of dedicating yourself right now. I want you to cross over in your mindset. You don't have to have it all figured out. The only thing you need to do is what Laura was sharing with me last night. She said, just wake up and ask the Lord, Lord, what do you have for me to do today? And whatever he leads you to do, get on the cross and die to yourself and do what the Lord, that's how you live for eternity. Glory to God. But right now, let's make a declaration of faith to say I'm not living for my own, my, my, my life and my, my, my ways. Let's declare this together. Everybody say this with me. Say, Father, I submit my will to your will. I will not live for myself and my selfish desires any longer. I make a decision today to live for you, to find and to fulfill your plan for my life. Everybody say this with me. Say, I know that you have a plan for my life. And I make it my intention to fulfill that plan. Teach me your ways. Lead me and guide me into the fullness of all that you have for me. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Laura, um, I know we have so much more. There's so much more here that we prepared. And, you know, it, and it's, it's so, so much of it is so powerful. Uh, I'd like to continue on maybe in this vein. We can do put some more of this out this week. But we do have a great uh, series that we've done um, on our YouTube. Uh, I think it's called, actually, Finding and Fulfilling the, the Plan of God for Your Life. Um, it's there are four or five videos. It's actually very, very powerful. So... Uh, you can go to our YouTube. I don't know how to tell everybody how to find it, but it, I, I know it's on there. It's Melody Church. You scroll and look for Melody Church. But I encourage you, too, to download our podcast. Um, I think we've got about 10 or 11 of them out right now. Um, but we start with the three parts of, of man, we're spirit, soul, and body. Basic stuff that Basic we all stuff, need to grow and in. Basic stuff really how to That'll develop your, your spirit. Right it will change your life. I don't My care. mom told me yesterday she watches our podcast. Yeah. And she she loves them. So you can download. It's the Spiritual Leader with Darren Baldwin. You could either uh, look for Darren Baldwin on the podcast or, Dar- or the Spiritual Leader, and it'll come up. It's also on our YouTube page. You can look under playlist, and it'll be the podcast. But um, that will be um, just a blessing to you as well. You can share it with others, too, which would be great. Yeah, it's super powerful. So listen, uh, we love you. And um, we love all of you that are here this morning. And we're Laura, again, we're going to be releasing some plans yes, this week on what our strategy is for yeah. reopening Melody Church. Uh, so we'll let you know more about uh, that this week. Uh, we love you.